Hallelujah. Let's go to Psalms 100 this morning. Psalms 100. Psalms 100. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Thank you for everyone that does involve themselves in ministry. I just said something negative before I want to say something positive. <laughs> Thank you. All right. It's the psalm of thanksgiving. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Hallelujah. Yeah. Did you see the exclamation point there? Do you know what an exclamation point means? Thomas, do you know what an exclamation, what's it mean? You emphasize it. Thank you. You emphasize Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Yeah. Uh, you thought you were done with school, didn't you? <laughs> well, you know, that, I understand. I, my wife's always correct me with it when it's loans and uh, borrowing. You know, she's an English grammar crazy person. <laughs> all right, I, I came to read the Word of God. Yeah. You know, I should just read the word of God. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're not God. You're not even close to being God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Endure into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Now, I'm going to tell you that we're here for Sunday school. I did not consult with Brother Wasman what he was going to teach. And nor did he consult with me what I was going to preach this morning. All right. All right. I want to preach to you this morning on... The prelude to his presence. The prelude to his presence. Would you pray with me right now in this room? Come to God. Grateful and thankful for this time, for your people, for our friends that are here, for your spirit that is working definitely in this house today. I'm thankful, God. Oh, God, anoint these Oh, lips of clay, you do what you need to do. You know what needs to be said, Father, much more than I would know what to be saying. So I ask you, God, just again to, to work powerfully in us, all of us here. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. As most of you know, I've, I have played a saxophone, don't play it often. I always like playing with somebody, not by myself. Uh, but I enjoy band music. I've just, just within the last, what, six months, something like that, maybe a little longer now, uh, I had the privilege of being at what's called the Banorama here in Kenosha. And I could see Dinah over where she was sitting with her French horn. Amen. And I just, I had a front, thank you, Brother Franklin, for that front row seat, man. Amen. Just right there, you can see the kids, and the, just so many of them are very, very talented. Amen. And uh, but uh, prelude, most of the time, for if you don't know, a lot of time when you speak of prelude, it has to do with music. Okay, it has to do with music. Now it, it can be used for other than music, but but a, a prelude is like someone that perhaps you have a large choir or or a orchestra and and it hasn't started there's been just like there was this morning a lot of people yakking out there and it was five after 11 oh did i say that it was five after 11 we ain't got started yet and uh, you know and and then uh then the prelude begins it may be just one person just one person they may begin to sing a song softly it may be a person with an instrument and they just begin to play it's the prelude prelude is relatively short music uh it's uh it's a piece it is a piece that precedes a more important movement 
You, you need to get this. It is a peace that precedes a more important movement. I, uh, I have looked on YouTube, and, and I've seen this a number of times. They, they have what they call the flash mobs. Well, they also have the flash mob bands or marching bands. And I don't even know what country this was in, but, but there, it was an outside mall, and there's a lot of people just walking through, and somebody's already filming, and then a man just, a young man steps out into the middle of this area, and he, he's got, he just got a, a bass drum, and he starts a rhythm. He's by himself. He is the prelude. And then pretty soon he's, draw, he's, he's joined by a, another drummer, and they just keep filtering in until you have an entire, an entire band there. And of course, then they are all playing together. Hallelujah. Come this morning to preach to you the prelude to his presence. That preliminary action, it may be relatively short, but it's the peace that precedes a more important movement. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I just want you to you see, you may think we're all insane here today when you see us sing and cry and shout, some dance, whatever they may be doing. But what you didn't understand, it was the prelude. Something's fixing to happen. The the main event is about to take place. But you first had to have the prelude. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I sense him in this house today. I do. It can be possibly for you just a prelude of the main event. Whatever you need, God can do. Whatever you need, God can do. Whatever you need, God can do. Hallelujah. And so we read here to you, we enter into His gates with thanksgiving, and we enter into His courts with praise, and we're to be thankful. I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that's the prelude. The main event is coming. I want you to get that in your heart today. The main event is coming. We live in a world, ladies and gentlemen, where we, we, we exist uh, by what we see, what we hear, what we taste, what we touch. And what we smell. You must understand that God is spirit. You can't see spirit. God chooses to manifest himself. Or reveal himself as he did in the Old Testament. He revealed himself to, to Abraham in the plains of Mamre in the 18th chapter of Genesis. He had come just looking like a man. But he manifested himself. He manifested himself to Moses there in a burning bush. He manifested himself to the children of Israel in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. He came in the body of flesh. Does that what the Bible tells us in the New Testament? Amen. Without controversy, great is the mystery. This God was manifest in the flesh. The mighty God was in Christ. That Amen. He revealed himself to us. But you see, we live in 
a world of what we only see, taste, smell, touch, and hear. And we need the prelude. You see what praise does, lady and ladies and gentlemen, praise takes us from the realm of what we know to a realm that is not seen. God did not come today to communicate with your flesh. Your flesh is hostile to God. What he did come to do is communicate with your spirit. And for some today, praising God really doesn't make a lot of sense. And may I say it as kindly as I can today, you're thinking with a mind of flesh. It is God that told us to come before Him with praise. It is God that said to enter into His courts, amen, with praise and with singing and thanksgiving. So God has chosen to meet with His people and take them into a realm that you cannot see by praise. Praise defies everything that's happening around you. It's already been said this morning, amen, that sometimes we ain't doing so good. Sometimes we're struggling. But in, in spite of our struggles, in spite of not doing good, when we make up our mind to praise God, it takes us from a realm of what we know, know to a realm that we don't know. Hallelujah. And that's how God has chosen to meet with His people. You are not on God's intellectual level. Some of you are pretty smart here today. You ain't on God's level. Your wisdom is is foolishness to God. Your understanding is less than what a Kenny Gardner goes when it comes to God. We think somehow we're on His level. Oh, no, sir. You ain't on His level. You're not even close to being on His level. And so... He instructs me to come into His presence with praise. It is the prelude to His presence. So you're having a lousy, stinking day. You don't feel like opening your mouth up to praise God. In fact, all you want to see out of your mouth is a bunch of grumble and complaint. And your mind says to you, you know, I'm just going to let everybody know the kind of deal I got going today. And if you don't understand that, you, you should have just been with my wife the other day when I was in so much stinking pain. I mean, I wasn't at that moment praising God. I was being anything but a praiser of God. I was grumbling. I was short. I was barking. Oh, I know none of you are ever like that. I, I'm, I'm so happy that you let me be the pastor of this church. I, I'll try to get better. You understand? My barking never took me into the presence of God. My grumbling and complaining never took me in, into the presence of God. Hallelujah. 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 All right, are, are you still with me? The Bible says in Psalms 33 and 1, Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for praise from the upright is beautiful.
You understand that the Word of God is inspired by God? Now, you may not think it's beautiful, but the Word of God says when the upright begin to praise Him, to Him, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, you ain't making much sense. Yeah, and the life you're living ain't making much sense either. It says, praise the Lord with the harp. Make melody to Him with an instrument of ten strings. Verse 3. Sing to Him a new song. Play. Play skillfully with a shout of joy. That's what it says. We do need to practice. We, we do need to have everything in order when we come to the house of God to praise Him. We need to fix whatever technical problems we got long before we have a service. You need to know what you're singing if you're up here. And I ain't faulting anybody up here today. Nobody. Whatever instrument you're playing, however you're singing, you need to do it skillfully. And some of you, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we're not asking you to sing a solo. Man, am I messing with people. But you sing with the rest of us when we all sing. Skillfully, with a shout of joy. The scripture says in Psalms 50 and verse 23, Whoso offers praise glorifies me. That's why the devil wants to shut your praise down. That's why he doesn't want new ones to come into this house and do what some of the rest of us are doing. He doesn't want you to praise God. That's why it seems foreign. And it just seems, amen, for some people it's ridiculous. But the Word of God says, whoever, amen, whoever offers praise glorifies me. Hallelujah. From the youngest... Till the oldest. Am I going slow? I, I need some help this morning. All right. I, I, hey, young man. Let, let me let me take this young man right here. Yes, this young man. All right. I want you to. Stand here. Don't just stand facing me. Don't worry about them people out there. Don't worry about them. All right, you just stay right there. Uh, you? All right, come here. All right. I want you to come. Okay, you got you to pay attention, son. You can get fired from this job, you know. Come, Come over here. Okay, I want you to stand facing this. No, you stay right where you're at. You, you, you face the other direction. You just stay right there. All right. All right. Now, you guys got to listen to me. Okay, look at, look at me for a minute. What I want you to do is I want you to face each other. And then I want you to take your back up a little bit. I want you to take your hands and... Touch. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Both hands. Both hands. Sir. And, and touch them right there. All right. Okay. Just, okay. You got that? That's your job. You do it well. There may be a reward for you. Okay. You got it? All right. Yeah. 
All right, you can put your hands down right now, but you got to stay here. All right, you got to you got to move a little ways here. All right, we just you know, I, you know why I chose those guys because they're cute and you all like it. But I got to adult you to go to sleep on me. You, 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 don't, you don't know what extent God goes to to meet with you. You many times take it for granted when you come in this house and you feel the presence of an almighty God. My God. My God. You don't know, really, the value or the importance of praise. Because if you knew its value, nobody could stop you from praising God. May, may I just talk to some men for a moment in this house. You may know how to court a young lady to get her affections. But you don't know how to court God. Let me run it by you again. You'll bring flowers. You'll hold her hand. You'll tell her, you'll tell her she's the most beautiful woman in the world. Just to get her affections. You'll go out of your way to do that. But you don't know how to court God. The Bible makes it very clear to us that sin has separated us from God. It's illustrated in Exodus when Moses has gone up into the mount and received what we know as the Ten Commandments, the tablets of stone. He got more than the tablets of stone, ladies and gentlemen. He came down with God's plan of how to approach him. Why was God concerned, amen, about, about man and having to approach him? Because man is sinful and God cannot come into a sinful presence. You understand? And God wanted to meet with Israel. So God said to them, I got a plan. You got to follow the plan. You got to do it exactly how I want you to do it. Exactly. In fact, God had given wisdom to craftsmen within Israel who would form all the pieces of furniture and overlay them with gold and all the vessels, everything that concerns the tabernacle. I ain't got time to get into the tabernacle today. But its sole purpose was that God could meet with them. We were, if we were, if we were priests in the Old Testament, and we wanted to do the functions of a priest, Oh, this is the same in the temple as well as in the tabernacle. You had to, you had to, first of all, wash. Everybody say wash. At the brazen labor. You got to get your heart clean. Tell your neighbor, you got to get your heart clean. You got to get your heart clean. They had to wash. Before the brazen labor, there was a brazen altar, which, by the way, was the biggest piece of furniture and at the biggest piece of furniture they offered sacrifices to God in fact it was a place of death and death in the scripture is a type of our repentance you want God to move in your life you need the biggest piece of furniture to be a part of your life and that's the brazen and all you need that place of repentance that place of dying so here we are. Here we are. Here we are. So I'm a priest. So I enter into the 
holy place. On my right is called the table of showbread, 12 loaves of bread. To my left is the golden candlesticks that have a mixture of oil that can only be used for those candlesticks. It is the light. And directly in front of me, directly in front of me, is the altar of incense. Directly in front of me, the altar of incense. And behind the altar, there is a veil. The only way behind that veil is to either go under the veil or around the veil. It is one solid veil. All right, now hear me. Every day when they had the morning sacrifice, the priest would come into the altar of incense and he would take a censer and he would light the fire from an ember from the brazen altar and put it on there in a sweet fragrance would fill that room. Oh, many of you know already what it is. It's a type of prayer and praise. Prayer and praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once a year, the high priest comes in. He has confessed his sins. He shed blood for his own sins. Now he stands before the altar of incense. And behind that altar, okay guys, time to do your thing. Is the Ark of the Covenant, which symbolizes the very presence of God. But he's not going in there without first taking from the altar of incense with a censer ashes that have the fragrance that fills the room. And he goes over to the side and he thrusts the censer through, waving it. And as he's waving it, that small room is filling, filling with the smoke and the smell of that incense from the altar of incense. And then he will finally enter into the very presence of God. He did not go in without first putting that censer into the room. Now some of you, you ain't getting it. Thank you guys. You did a wonderful job. Give, give him a hand. Clap, clap for him for me. Thank you. Some of you are not getting it. You're not understanding whose presence you're coming into. You're not understanding that the altar of incense was a prelude to His presence. That you always went by that altar before you even dared think about going into His presence. It actually says in the Bible in Exodus 30, you shall not offer, verse 9, you shall not offer strange incense on it. You need to get rid of that sloppy junk. You live like the devil all week and then you come in here. And, you know, the Bible says we're to live holy hands. You understand? Holy hands. You need to take care of all the business of your slop before you begin to praise him. Is all right? That's why we that's why we repent. That's why we begin praying in the car on the way to church. 
That's why we begin to take care of business long before we come into his presence. Because you are entering into the holy of holies. Not everybody gets to go in there. In the Old Testament, it was just a high priest. But because of a cross, because of Jesus' death, because the veil was rent from the top to the bottom, now all of us can come into His presence. Oh my gosh. I, this is just this is my problem, not yours. I got a problem with showmanship. I'm not saying that we do any showmanship here, but I have a problem with people that are just up on a platform just performing. That's all they're doing. Now, I, I'm not saying that we do that here, but I, 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 just, I got a problem with that kind of stuff. Just looking for men and women to give us accolades. I got a problem with that. I want my motives to be motives of worshiping Him. If I'm out in this audience, I'm not lifting my hands up to impress you. I'm not shouting to impress you. I'm not clapping my hands to impress you. I'm not speaking in tongues to impress you. There's only one I want to impress. There's only one. And I know the prelude precedes His presence. Ha. You see, the Bible says in Leviticus 16 and 12, then He shall take a censer referring to to the high priest, full of burning coals of fire from the altar before the Lord, with his hands full of sweet incense beaten fine, and bring it inside the veil. The prelude to his presence. Did you know Samuel was in the priesthood? He was a Kohathite. His mama gave him to the tabernacle. He's there as a young fellow. In fact, if you read in Samuel's, you'll read that the Bible says during that time the Word of God was very rare. There was no prophetic voice, no, no anointed voice. It was very rare. And it's it's evening now. The priest has come in and he has lit the lamps. And the incense, the fragrance of it just is filling the room. And the light of that lamp is now dimming as it runs out of its supply. And a young boy, a young boy has laid down for the night. And a voice says to him, Samuel! He doesn't know it's God. But you see, there's a prelude to His presence. Everything's been done according to what His Word says. And now, God is responding. Samuel! You read the story, he runs to Eli, did you call? And that'll happen three times before it dawns on Eli, before it gets through to him. This is God. And He'll tell him on that third time, Son, when you lay down, and you hear that voice, you just simply say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. That didn't all happen 
by accident. It wasn't a whim that produced that incident. It was because of the prelude to his presence. May I say to us in this house, many of you know who, who I am. I'm not talking about being a pastor. You know, I try to be sensitive to God. I'm here to tell you, sometimes we're too quick to move. What are you saying? We want to move on with the next part of the deal. But the problem is, God hasn't moved on. You can't put God on the clock. Oh, hey, you can go home anytime you want to go home. But God's not on the clock. And when He begins to work, you need to just feel after Him. I would that I could look at 100% of this audience and see you all feeling after him. I'm not trying to be critical. I'm just telling you from my observation of standing here in the front, I see many that don't even have a clue what I'm talking about right now, about feeling after God, about offering to God praise and prayer. Amen. And realizing that when God comes, when God begins to flex His muscle, he ain't coming to show off. He's coming to do something. So expect response when you praise God. Response from God. It says in Psalms 59 and 9, I will wait for you. I'm messing with some people's food clock on a Sunday morning. It's 12.31. If you need to go, just go ahead and go. That's all right. If you need to go, go ahead. <laughs> did, the, did the shoe hit you, bro? Because you're the only one that's talking. Yeah, you, you understand what you throw a shoe into a pack of dogs. The dog that yelps is the dog that got hit. Now, my, Michael's not a dog. <laughs> I will wait for you. Oh, you, his strength, for God is my defense. Verse 10 says, after I've waited for him, it says, my God of mercy shall come to meet me. Some of you just get in a hurry. You spend more time massaging the problem than you spend in waiting on God. You spend more time talking about the problem instead of praising God. The Bible tells us in Psalms 22 and 3 that God inhabits, it says it in the King James, the praises of His people. But it says in the New King James, but you are wholly enthroned in the praises of Israel. Can, can, can I just, just yak at you a minute here? Now Jack, the decisions that you make, do not come from your hands or your feet. You're taking orders. It ain't Mary either. <laughs> you're, you're taking orders. Your brain is telling you to lift that hand. Your brain is telling you to move those feet. It's all of our problems. Rest up here, ladies and gentlemen. Rest. 
up here. Rest up here. I'm just taking my time now. And it will, it will demonstrate itself on your face. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Let me see what I can do to shorten this baby up. All right. All right. All right. Every decision you make starts here. Temptation doesn't begin with the devil. Did you know that? Well, you did, some of you don't know because you spend a lot of time blaming him for stuff that you're doing. That's what you do. Temptation starts with your own lust. The devil just knows where to put the stick in and stir it. But it's your lust. Our problems are much like that. He'll come in and stir up the problem, children. He'll make a good witch's brew to mess you up six ways to Sunday. And you come to the house of God, and you're no more interested in worshiping God than the man in the moon. But you've read in the Bible... And it says, I will praise the Lord. And you understand that praise is an act of my will. And you begin to praise God. What literally happens is your problems are enthroned on your mind. But when you begin to praise God, it's kicking the problem off the throne of your mind. It is. My God. You get negative? Well, it's because you let negative get enthroned on your mind. You're running people down? Well, it's because you let running down get on your mind. You're blaming your wife? Well, anyways... You're blaming your husband. You're blaming your kids. It's what you let get enthroned on your mind. And whatever's enthroned on your mind is controlling you. But when I praise God, it kicks whatever's off my, on my throne out. And it places him. Hallelujah. The prelude to his presence. You're dealing with doubt today? It doesn't surprise me. That's the merchandise that my enemy uses. He passes it out freely. You can find it on every street corner. You can find it on every TV. You can find it in the literature. You can read it in a magazine. You can talk to your neighbor. You can talk to yourself. And get down. That's his merchandise. That's his merchandise. See, what he wants you to do is he wants you to doubt the Word of God. And see, we know the Scripture says that faith, faith is what is needed to please God. Without faith, we can't please Him. We know from the Scripture that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We know that. There's more going on here than just me speaking to you right now. There's God's Word going forth. I mean, there's a Spirit at work, and He's coming to those doubts. To attack them and boot them out. All right? 
praise is how you begin to break the barrier of doubt. I have praised God when I'm here to tell you I would testify to it that when I praised Him, it was mechanical to me. God, you are great. And I'm having a hard time saying it. I'm just saying words. God, you are mighty. God, you are everlasting. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. But as I continue to wade through doubt, circumstances, people, yes, people, they can get in the way. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere in that business, as I praise Him, it becomes the prelude to His presence. I know what I'm, I ain't, I ain't giving you some kind of theory here, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, I gotta, I gotta close real quick here. I, I'm giving you some kind of theory. You're you know, out of your mind. Just like you, my wife and I have suffered many things. Just like you. We've had stuff rain on our parade. I still remember that early morning, five o'clock, when my niece, who's an RN, walks into the room and says, Uncle Mark, have you been praying? And I have to be honest with you, I was more asleep than awake. My son is laying there. He's out. They've, they've, they put him out. He's been so much pain. All right, but when she said that, it was like a cold water <sighs> washed over me. And I may not have said it, but I'm thinking to myself, my God, son, you need to be praying. Something's happened. It wasn't long after that that the doctor would come in. And he said, there, it, it, it could be one of two things. It could be a virus. Or it could be leukemia. Well, I'm here to tell you, I already knew what it was. And I knew it wasn't a virus. I'm just telling you. I, I didn't speak that out, but I knew this, this, ain't, this ain't just some little get over it after we've had antibiotic kind of deal. I would leave there. My wife would stay. I would go. My mom and dad were still alive. I would inform them. I'd walk into their house early in the morning again. I would go home, wake up my daughter, tell her. I would let my oldest son know. Amen. Where I really lost it that morning was when I walked into his room. The boy had had the most miserable of nights. Mis my wife had already had him at the emergency room once already that night. Now he's back. When I walked into his room, this guy, he doesn't like his dad. He had his dress shoes out. He had his underwear. He had everything ready to go to church on Sunday morning. Now that's preparation. And when I saw that sitting there, I got to tell you, I lost it. I, I didn't know if he'd ever get to go back to church. I really didn't. And so, well, I'm dragging this story out. <laughs> and so, you know, after I had told my family, and they were all were heading towards the hospital, it just happened to be a Sunday, Brother Wasman. I had to go to church. In fact, of all things, that morning, I was, we had an evangelist with us. That morning, I was teaching of all subjects, on faith. My God. All right. Of all subjects, faith on that Sunday morning. And so, you know, it's 7.30 here at the church. There ain't a soul in the house. 
<laughs> there was nobody here praying, nobody seeking God. It was empty. Even the evangelist who was next door, he wasn't even in the building. So, I pulled out my saxophone, put it together, and I started playing songs. Now, I was raised in a generation where we, we, we played a lot of hymns. I, I have a hard time with some of our music today. Uh, it's great music. I love well, the King of Glory. I, I love that song. But, but you understand, a lot of it today has got a lot of sharps and flats for me. You know, and it just, it, it can be crazy. You could just, you're playing it, man. And it, anyway, that, that's not, that's not your problem. That's mine. All right. So I, I started playing the hymns. When I started playing, it was cold. Not that I was cold, but it was cold. There was nothing. Nothing. But I kept playing. I'd stop. I'd, oh God, I love you. I praise you. I got my horn and start playing it again. I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it wasn't long. And he showed up. You see, there's a prelude to his presence. And it ain't griping, and it ain't complaining, and it ain't being filled with doubt, and it ain't informing everybody about all the troubles you've got. It's praising him, magnifying him. You want the Holy Ghost? You're going to get it when you praise God. For he inhabits the praise of his people. He comes after that short peace. And so as you're praising God, remember the main events is fixing to take place. It's fixing to take place. I don't care how low you are today. If you can praise God. There's going to be a main event in your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not going to go on any farther with this message. I got, I got more, but I ain't going any farther. I, uh, I wanted to see what, what is required to come into the presence of the Queen of England. And I, I, got, a, I got a page and a half that we're not even going to touch about just coming into the presence of a human being who's been anointed to be a personage that is called royalty. The women got a curtsy, the men, men will bow, you know, and all that business, all that pageantry. Yeah. Even if you go to church, when she walks by, you gotta, you acknowledge her. You know, you, you will call her your majesty. And that's just how they, that's just the approach. I ain't got time to go into any business. When I read that, I got to thinking, I got a king. In fact, he's the king of all kings. He is really your majesty. Your majesty. 
I noticed, I noticed that in the information I was reading, it said, if you don't know how to be in the presence of the queen, talk to somebody that's in the royal household. They know how she's to be approached. And when, that, when I read that, I said, oh my, my, my. I know how to approach the king. I'm part of his royal household. And I'm here to tell you today, it will be your praise and your thanksgiving and your singing that will usher you into his presence. The prelude to his presence. That's why during a service there will be so much distraction. You can get your mind on what you got to do tomorrow. You can get your mind on what's going on over the next pew over here or over here. Or, or the kid that's misbehaving in front of you. Or the adults that are yakking. Or the adults that's on its iPad or checking out the, what, what the temperature is going to be when they get out of here. Well, I can tell you one place where the temperature, and I don't have to, I don't have to read. I know it's very hot there, and you don't want to go there. So why don't you put your phone away and get close to the master? The prelude to his presence. You got situations today. All hell's broken loose in your life. Your family's a mess. It's dysfunctional. Everything around you. I can tell you what will draw the presence of the king. That prelude where you just step out of the crowd and you're singing by yourself. And the angels say to the Lord, Did, "Do you see? What, do you hear that?" He said, "Oh yes, I've been I've been watching it. I've been listening." You see, God's not like that. Oh really? Why does it say in the Bible that with Cornelius's prayers and his giving was an alms before God? He was paying attention. So you may be the only one started working. Because sooner or later, somebody's going to step out because they're going to feel what you're already feeling because you have entered His presence. The prelude to His presence. Well, let's change how we have church. I'll go jump in the lake. We is going to sing. We're going to worship God. We're going to clap our hands. We're going to dance. We're going to shout. We're going to weep. We're going to bow. Just a few weeks ago, I saw people down on their knees during the song service with their face in the carpet. Why? Because you see, when he showed up, who? That's about where you want it to be. The prelude to his presence.